Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. Um. That's oh. my face. <laughs> He's crushed. I'm so sorry. I crushed your feet. I was looking for my phone. Those are my tootsies. <laughs> so sorry. Wait, I gotta move our friend down. All right. Oh my goodness. I didn't even see. Come on. <laughs> that is the fact that they're next to each other. The most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Makes me life. really happy. Really happy. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <y'all. laughs> well, why do I sound like Britney Spears and you sound like Little John? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway. What? <laughs> What's up, everyone? What? Hello. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I did it again. <laughs> boom, boom. That's what we're telling you. We've done it again. We've done it again, everybody. We have taken someone else's idea and we're going to bring it to you like this is the first time anyone's ever heard of it. Surprise. This is called plagiarism. <laughs> no. This is called plagiarism and tangent. <laughs> no. Not well, not plagiarism. No, no, we didn't. We no, didn't plagiarize this idea, and that's not even what we're talking about at first. So why don't you slow down? You're going too fast. <laughs> we're not ready yet. Yeah, you got a fast car. <laughs> slow down, Tracy Chapman. <laughs> I got a ticket anywhere. <laughs> exactly what it's I I love the idea of people singing in cursive. You sing in cursive. I know. You do it so well. I know. I don't think I can. I think I'm just drunk. <laughs> People think, oh my gosh, she's talking in cursive. I was like, I'm just drunk. It is my it is my vocal stim right now to just be like, <laughs> good. That and, do you know what I'm going to say? Help is on the way, dear. <laughs> yeah, she's been doing that a lot. I can't That one, what's stop. the other one that you do from TikTok? There's another one? Speaking of TikTok, hold on. You just fucking wait. But what's the one you do from TikTok? I don't know. Yes, you do. No, I you posted it about the. It's I, the cap cut one that you what? posted about when you were doing your remodel of your room. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? It's the guy that's looking around. He's like, <laughs> I don't. You know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. Yes. No. <laughs> no. Fuck. What does he do? He's like. <laughs> I don't know, or something. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking you about. You posted all. about it, and you were like, when my husband, when I tell my husband I want to redo the room. So <laughs> what is it? <laughs> oh, no. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. Just yeah. hanging around. That's it. <laughs> Just hanging around. Just hanging around. <laughs> I don't know. Speaking of TikTok, it's a beautiful it. transition. Are you ready for it? Mm-hmm. Because we're a professional podcast for professional <laughs> people. people. And if you want more professionalism, you can go to patreon.com slash ladies and tangents. That's right. Advertising for ourselves. It worked. We're doing it. Some more. (laughs) Somebody commented and was like, hey, talking about Patreon for the first 20 minutes of the episode was a little extreme. And I went back and I was like, we did not. First of all, you're a liar. First of all, Sandoval's a liar. (laughs) Which, if you want to know more about that, go, go to, to patreon.com slash ladies and tangents, where I will be poorly explaining the Vanderpump Rules finale that I I got YouTube TV for mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. watch last night with my sister. Also, Ariana, who was basically the main character of this story, yeah. was on Watch What Happens Live with yeah. Andy Cohen afterwards and basically broke the internet. Oh! <gasps> Okay, great. And Jerry's going to be talking about Mm -hmm. all about it. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking about what broke TikTok, which is if you're on TikTok frequently, you know about either Cake Gate or Tattoo Gate. Jerry knows about neither of these Nothing. things because she's not as because uh, I'm too heavily busy. involved in the internet as I am. I'm too busy just <laughs> hanging, hanging around. around. <laughs> and I'm just over here like I have to know everything about what's happening with these two little scandals that have blown up TikTok. So I'm going to be poorly explaining those to Jerry. If you want to hear more about them or if you know about them and you want to hear me talk shit about them, <laughs> come to patreon.com. I'm, I'm going to go to patreon.com slash ladies and tips because I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, it, it is juicy business okay and i'm gonna do my best explaining it when i can't remember almost <laughs> anything about it so we're gonna see okay 
Also, pivot, if we're still going to be, well, I guess it's not a pivot. It's just a continuation of us uh, promoting ourselves. If you don't like it, guess where else? Guess what? Guess what? We're going on tour. (laughs) Going on tour. We are are going going live to cities and places and things. Just two cities. Oh, for now. Pittsburgh, uh, uh, Pittsburgh, PA, and Buffalo, New York. We will be inside of you. Inside of you. (laughs) And if you're wondering, like, oh my God, why? Yes, because someone commented that they would pay lots of money to figure out why those two places were chosen. And as we sit here waiting for that check to come through, we will tell you (laughs) right now, which is why. Surprise. We don't have a a, a fucking handle in anything. (laughs) I'll tell you where it comes from. If you really want to know the ins and outs, where it comes from. I don't think you guys are supposed to know this. Are we supposed to tell you? I don't know. I don't know. I think, I don't know that it's a secret. I just don't think normal people do, but we're not You sure about that? You sure sure about that? that? God. Okay. So if you're like, I don't. I don't really know what's going on. Help is on the way, dear. <laughs> and it's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's, it's me. me. No. W- the reason that these two cities were selected, most likely, I think this is where it comes from. Also, no disrespect is, to Buffalo or Pittsburgh. We are really Pitt- excited Pittsburgh. to go. Pittsburgh. We love <laughs> Pittsburgh. Hey, and Pittsburgh. Buffalo. <laughs> we're going to both. We cannot wait to go to Buffalo and to Pittsburgh. <laughs> this is no disrespect to you. You would have also been on the top of our list, but but maybe, you know. Well, it's they not, are. We didn't pick you. <laughs> technically. Technically, they are on the top of our list because when we were discussing going on tour, mm-hmm. this is our soft launch yes. essentially so we Basically, gave they don't trust us to go on a real tour it's fine oh, sh- <laughs> no, I'm just Sierra kidding. doesn't even know okay That's not what it this is. is Sierra learning as well uh, we went and downloaded all of our statistics and yes. said this is where our listenership is this is our top cities across the U.S. uh where our downloads are coming from and Instead of choosing like our top top cities, which is probably Cleveland, yeah, true, um, or top cities near us at least, yes, near us within driving Not on distance, the West Coast. right? But they don't want to do the top top cities until like our hard launch yeah. of a tour. So they're like, we're gonna pick two of the cities in like your top five ten range, and we will see how, how you do. Go. So if you guys want us to do more places more cities show a up. longer stretch <laughs> for the show then it all falls on Please buffalo do. and pittsburgh yeah. <laughs> and if they go well no fucking pressure guys <laughs> then we get to do more yeah yeah this is just a, so that's how that happened this is just a little trial period but also we're really excited and we hope you're excited and we we're are hope- all gonna have anxiety together we're hoping that we'll be able to record it yeah and then um be able to offer like either a compilation of the shows or is some form of it be able to share it with again our patreon.com, patreon.com slash ladies, ladies and tangents, tangents. <laughs> that's where you'll find us you guys know the you Sorry, is that? No, G is the one that, yeah. is it copyrighted? I love so much when, what's his name? There's a guy and he says, you say I'm a tall thug baby, I'm a giraffe yes. or something like that. Yeah. It's yes. from Caroline. Caroline. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you I listened to that today. Thug, baby, I'm a deep rap. I actually love that. Song. <laughs> me too. It was playing when I was getting ready here. I got <laughs> baby, give me icky, icky. <laughs> it's so fun. To it sing. is so good. I just got us a, an Amazon Echo, not sponsored, but I just got us an Amazon Echo for the office, and I've been playing music in here all the time, and it's so wonderful. Yeah, I played it yesterday, and Sierra's like, "Where the fuck is that coming from?" It scared me because it was underneath us, and I didn't see it, and yeah. I was like, "Hello." Yep. All right. Tell them what we're doing. Well, I'm going to tell you about my first kiss. Okay. We were we were pre gaming um, for lunch, and we for our job. <laughs> we got to. T- why were we talking about kissing? Not each other. Mm. <laughs> why were we talking about kissing? Why were we? I think we were talking about maybe embarrassing moments. <gasps> you know how you know how it happened. How did we do it? It came from Noah wanting to play the trumpet. The- <laughs> No one wants to play the trumpet. You said he likes how it feels on his lips. I said, why don't you play the saxophone? And, and then, then we got into guys who we dated who played saxophone. instruments. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or just instrumental. Yep. Yeah. They're in the such. Yeah. And oh, yes, because a guy I dated, yes. I didn't know played this. Well, I didn't date him. 
he just kissed me and then was like, I'm going to take off your pants now. And I was like, I think I'm going to leave. <laughs> I think maybe you, I'm in control of that. And no, I think maybe you can keep my graphing calculator because I want to leave immediately. <laughs> And I don't want to wait to figure out how to get the top back on because sometimes those that's tricky business. <laughs> oh my god! Why do they make it so hard? Right? Anyway, do they make you guys buy graphing calculators anymore? They're like a hundred bucks. It seems classes, but it's fine. Are are they like still? Bucks. Yeah. Well, they were back in my day. Well, that's what I was gonna say. I don't know what they are now. I haven't. I haven't uh, price sourced a graphing calculator in a while. I was like, I can barely afford lunch. You guys are going to make me buy a hundred dollar calculator that I don't know how to use. And I'm probably going to fail this class. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. You sure about that? Sure about you that? sure about that? Anyways, go on. I'm going to do math, baby. I'm a giraffe <laughs> calculator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. So, um, my first kiss. Because I told you that I my first kiss was with a guy who was trauma dumping. And she stopped telling me well, what really yes. happened with the juicy, juicy business. Because she's like, that was your first kiss? And I was like, well, it was my first peck. It wasn't my first makeout. My first makeout yeah. happened the summer before my hour junior year. Yeah, we both kissed very late. We were both like in our yeah. 15, 16 era. Late kissers. Late kissers. Okay. I made up for lost time. <laughs> So there was a boy, okay, and his. Do I know his name? Gr- you sh- you sure do. His grandma lived in the apartments behind my parents' house, and oftentimes this boy would come around the fence, and we would play basketball together. And then one night, wait, we agreed that we were gonna sneak out. Is this the trash one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you? What would you this consider trash man? <laughs> No, not no. I never kissed trash man. Okay, I was I, confused. I never kissed trash man. Which one is this? I dated trash man for four days, and I think I broke up with him on Christmas via ICQ. Okay, okay. Which one is this? Convict. <laughs> Music. <You're lying. laughs> you know. <laughs> Wait, what's his name? <laughs> Convict. Music. <laughs> hold on, hold on. What is his first name? <laughs> That's it. I kept wanting to say Adam, and I knew that wasn't right. No, okay. No. Okay. Akon. So, yeah. So me and Akon agreed that we were going to meet. I don't. I didn't have text messaging at this time, so I don't know how we agreed that we were going to meet this night. I think part of it was just like a no, verbal it's... agreement over yeah. basketball. <gasps> That's hot. And then I was, I just kind of like walked outside and stood there, being like, "Is he going to come around the fence? Is he not? I don't know." In is front his, of your backyard. In my backyard. Okay. And so you know he my- He would hop your friend. He would walk around it. it. It had an opening. Oh, that's right. So like the way that my childhood home was set up <laughs> was like my parents' backyard connected to my grandparents' backyard connected to my aunt's backyard. And so there was a fence, but it just was a line. Okay. Yeah. It didn't connect to anything. No. So he would walk around it. And so I'm standing there and I see him come around the fence and I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. (laughs) And at this point, I had done nothing but just like pet Pet. kiss the guy who was trauma dumping on me. Okay. But you guys weren't dating anymore? We were not. Okay. We were not. I was dating nobody. Okay. Okay. I think I might have been talking to the guy that I dated in high school, but uh, nothing serious yet. So anyway, we get a blanket. And we lay it on the grass by our shed, okay? And it's right underneath the clothing line (laughs) in the backyard. And we're just laying there, and the stars are out. (gasps) And it is, it's nighttime. And the stars are out. And I'm terrified that I'm going to get caught because I snuck out. But then I was informed later that, like, if I'm still on my property, that it's not technically sneaking out. Like, I was just outside. (laughs) But you had a friend over. I did. I mean, he was also the neighbor, so it was like kind of his yard as well, I guess. <laughs> we were very close to the fence line. And so we're Get over there, buddy. <laughs> we're laying on the ground, just like really close to each other. And he tells me his hands are cold. And he puts them in between my thighs. Oh my God. <laughs> and I am so stupid. He probably wanted something to happen, but I was just like, oh yeah, these things are so warm. Oh, I normally do these fuckers. <laughs> 
<laughs> these things, I like sweat at night. Like, put them, you want to toast these babies up, put them in here. Between regular, these two thick slices of bread. It's a regular toaster oven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're an easy bake oven, stick your fingers in them. <laughs> this light bulb is about to warm you the fuck up. Anyway, we made out. <laughs> with this hand. <laughs> Yes. So they weren't even roaming. They were just. Like, <laughs> yes. Weird. Yes. Like, where were your hands? Do you remember? I don't know. Probably up. Like ah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, maybe on his. Maybe on my chest or his chest. I, I don't remember know. my first makeout. We were full on grabbing the back of each other's heads. You like, were it was very passionate. Yeah, but we had waited a long time. No, I was just like we the... had been dating for like a year and a half, oh. and I was such a Christian virgin. <laughs> I was like, I can't even be kissed. Unless yeah. it's the right moment. And then we went straight from that to like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I won't say. Nothing, nothing else ever happened with this guy. Really? We just kissed and then he went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He went to jail like a couple of years later, hey, but he did go to jail. Too, after that. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah, he, I remember. He just got community <laughs> service. I remember I was friends with him on Facebook <laughs> and all of a sudden like somebody else was in control of his face and it's like hey convict music is in jail and so if you want to contact him and you're like oh don't uh, and don't. his grandpa was like under the comments like talking shit about him and i was like wow this is some drama there's nothing i love more actually there's nothing i hate more than when someone's spilling some tea on Facebook, but like half spilled tea. Yes. I love a nosy grandma that's in there and is oh, like, yeah. this is what's fucking actually going on. Because there's someone that I've been following on Facebook, which we are going to do like Patreon, maybe like inner Facebook group drama uh, episodes. Well, I think we discussed that being a main episode as well. Like oh, really? deep diving into. Oh, so funny. Yeah, that drama. Like, like just Facebook group dramas, but just regular people. Yes. Facebook drama. There's a girl that I follow. Who has been constantly just like I'm in the ER, can't go to, like just every post is about like this bed's really itchy in the ER. <laughs> Nurses suck in, in the, the ER. ER, and then every post someone will comment like, "Oh my god, what happened?" And she's like, "Don't ask me about it. I'm not telling. It's my personal business." Message Hippa. me for more details. <laughs> oh my god, I love a message me for yeah, more details. Yeah, because then I'm always like, "Fuck you, dude." Okay, I will. <laughs> What's going on, girl? Tell wishy, me all about wishy. it. She's the best. <laughs> Give me the deets. Give me the hot goss. I want to know the what's 411? going on. Yeah. So anyways, there's that. Yeah. So anyway. That's not what any of this is about. No. So why are you here? Goodbye. This <laughs> is this is very serious. Oh, well, yeah. Well, as serious as we can make it. <laughs> yeah. We're going to so, take a serious topic and make it silly. <laughs> well, this, this topic was born out of what... Uh, how every other topic is born. This is some shit we talked about this week with our partners. Like literally two days ago. Yeah. And then we were like, hey, we could make this an episode. Let's scrap that idea that you've been working on for a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, and not scrap just, it. No, we just tabled S it. Scrappy dabby, do it. Yeah. No, save it for another day. We did. A rainy day situ yeah. situation. Yes. And so now save we Save your tears for another day. And that's what we're doing. I haven't tried an Ariana Grande impression before, and I don't feel like I was ready to I do mean, it publicly yet, but there it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So anyway. Anyway. Tell them what we're doing. The topic is called Finding Your Why. And if you guys are like, that's a great name. You're right, it is. And we found out we are not the We're first not the people person. to think so. And we probably won't be the last. Turns out, a man named Simon Sinek. Cool, because I was going to call him Steven, so that's definitely No, it's not Simon it Sinek. Sinek. He's a snack snack snack. snack. <laughs> Simon Sinek, okay, he wrote the book Find Your Finding Your Why. Find Your Why. Now, we didn't read it, so we can't tell you no. 100% if this is what we're going to be talking about. We are just saying what he wrote about is a practical guide for discovering purpose for you and your team. A lot of this is very focused on like Corporate business, business and I think maybe there's a potential for just like the solo individual. But again, we didn't read this. I just we came up with the idea yesterday, like the title of it. And then I typed it into Google and I was like, well, son of a bitch. Someone's already <laughs> written a book on it. Yeah. So but anyway, I don't think it's the same thing we're going to be talking about. No, because he also has another book that 
and an online class that says start with why. Okay. And it's how great leaders inspire everyone to take action. So again, I don't know what the fuck this man's talking about in these books, but he's published. <laughs> so like maybe it's it's definitely probably good information, Maybe, but we're not going to be talking about it. He us. does have a free exercise that we may fuck around and do. Yeah. Okay. Stick around. But the reason that this came about is because our partners mm-hmm. are not working full time. Yeah. They are home, they are caretakers, they are they have the luxury and freedom to kind of figure out what the fuck they want to do. Right. Okay. And upon doing this, not everyone does well under that kind of pressure. I know it's not pressure because it's freedom, but some people don't do well with freedom. With it's almost like a nice luxury, not a luxury, but a nice thing to have someone tell you what to do. Yes. And then when it's up to you to decide, it's almost like, ah. Uh-uh. Well, especially if you're someone who uh, is neurodivergent and has yeah. like decision paralysis. Yeah. It can be incredibly overwhelming because it can feel like I don't know where to start. It What's can feel my like purpose. Yes. Everything is just entirely too much. And you can get into your own head. And I found that that was happening with Shane. Yeah. And over the last year, I would say that. Shane and I have been doing a lot of work on finding ways to better communicate with one another. And I mentioned that we've been going to couples counseling. And that was one of the things we discussed in couples counseling is like Shane will say something that he thinks is completely clear. Like, how can you not understand this? And I'm like, could not be more confused. I need clarification. Yeah. And so he gets frustrated sometimes because I ask questions and he is like, I don't want to have to explain myself into the ground because now it feels like I have to like have a reason for what I'm saying or what I'm feeling. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> just a little, just a smidgen. Yeah. And so like our therapist was like, Jerry, just listen. You don't have to have the answer. You don't have to solve it. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know where we are right yeah, now. You're just like, confused. I'm so confused. Yeah. I'm not trying to invalidate him. I'm, I'm not trying to like, can like put him in a trap and be like, ha ha, got you. You're actually not feeling anything you're saying or feeling. Right. No, you're it's like, like I'm just I'm just I don't know how to support you because I don't know what the fuck is happening. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So one of the things that he has been saying lately is that he just wants to be happy. And he every time he thinks that he knows what's going to make him happy and it doesn't it feels like a failure yeah. and it feels like he falls lower and lower every single time. Yeah. And I don't understand that right. <laughs> because to me, failure doesn't exist yeah. and I have no problem pivoting and I have no problem just like continuing something even with no reward. Like, yeah. 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 And so I think, I think success to you, like we've said, looks different. Yes. Success well, to both of us looks different than the norm for people. And this is how we got to this conversation because Shane and I are having lunch and I said, what, what are you, what are your plans for today? And he's like, I don't have any. And I was like, mm, okay, what'd you do this morning? Not much. And I'm like, okay, this, these are signs of depression. Yeah. This is signs of you getting in your head. This is, um, just like a precursor for a bad fucking time. Yeah. So what can we do? What are you what are you trying to work towards? Mm-hmm. Like what's your goal? What's your why? And he goes, I just want to be happy. And I go, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. What does because I happy think that mean? is what some people struggle with. I think mm-hmm. that is a goal that people have. A lot of people, I know for myself it was, but I didn't really know what happiness looked right. like. And every time I thought I knew. And then I would achieve those things. I still wasn't. So I was like, maybe right. I'm wrong. Maybe the goalpost isn't where I thought it was supposed to be. Well, I think people view happy as a, as a goalpost and not like a symptom. Yes. They view it as the finish line and, and it's not, not. No. Yes. Because that you're chasing something. Um, you're chasing a moving target, yeah. essentially. Because what, it's not going to be a forever feeling. Well, and what's happy for you today is not happy for you tomorrow, was not happy for you 10 years ago. Yes. So when I was asking him, like, what does happy mean? He couldn't give me an answer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's, this is just like success. Yeah. What does success mean to you? Mm -hmm. Because it is such an ambiguous term Mm -hmm. and it means something so vastly different to everyone you talk to. Totally. So how do you know if you can't define it for yourself, whether or not you've achieved it? 
you don't. Right. So you're basically going into every single day blind and basically forcing yourself to rely on a feeling. Yeah. Which can be difficult. Especially to validate when- you. Uh, you don't have certain receptors that are like, and then you feel like, oh, I'm not doing it correctly. When you could be doing everything correctly, but those re- like receptors right. in your brain aren't releasing the chemical that you need to feel that feeling. You're almost playing, what's that thing where they lock you in a room and they're like, solve the puzzle to get out? Escape rooms. That's it. It's like you're in an escape room, but in your own head. Yeah. But you don't really know what the goal is and you and can't you solve out, the problem. Did you still solve it or did they just let you out? You know yeah, what I mean? It's, it's almost so... like there's no, it's confusing. The goal is confusing. Yes. Um, and so I told Shane what I believe my why is. And the whole reason that I've ever even thought about my why was because of and the, photography. Yeah. And the why was, is <clears throat> like your purpose for, why do you wake up? What is your purpose well, for going it, forward? It, it wasn't even just like why I wake up. I, I think it can be. But for me, it was why do, why do I do things? Well, that's so what I, I guess mean. For, my, for me, it was like, what's your reasoning for getting out of bed today? Right. Which is like, why do you do the things that right. you're doing? Right. Why do you, why, what's, what is your goal in working or in creating or in anything and I only started thinking about this when I was creating my photography business and I realized that the reason that I I wanted to be a photographer is because I wanted to help people I wanted to help people view themselves in a different way Mm -hmm. not in an unrealistic way in a way that maybe they couldn't see themselves because of all of the fog that life has put in front of them. Sure. I wanted to help them capture moments to help preserve things that I, in my own life, can't remember. Right. So I, I wanted to and change. feel comfortable doing Yes. It. I wanted to help people just enjoy living in their bodies and, and just the find joy in mundane things i used to say there's magic in the mundane yeah that's what i wanted i wanted to help people find yeah into capture so they had it forever right and then i realized i i also wanted to help when i was teaching Mm -hmm. i i wanted to help people but my problem with teaching was i was so limited put inside of like a box in what i could and couldn't do Mm -hmm what I couldn't, couldn't say. And I was very limited in my reach yeah. of how many people I felt I could reach through, I could help through teaching. Mm-hmm. And so photography felt like, okay, I can reach more people in a way that is more authentic to me. I could be a little bit more myself. But then my back started hurting. Yeah, dude, <laughs> and I was like physically taxing on your body. I'm like, okay, this is fulfilling to me and I really enjoy it, but I can't do it forever. What's and, the longevity here? And my children are at an age that I, I want my weekends back. Yeah, it's difficult to have to be away for 12, 14 hour days. Right. So it's hard for me to achieve my why because I also have other needs yeah, at, at home. home. And I didn't know what my why was, like how I was going to access my why, essentially, right. until the podcast took off. And I was like, okay, oh my God. Here it is again. This is not taxing on my body. I can make my own schedule. Mm-hmm. I can reach as many people as I want. The limit does not exist. Exactly. <laughs> and as much as I know that this is not normal, yeah. I know that this is an exception totally. to a rule, mm-hmm. but I think that when people feel just down and fucking depressed and low, it's because they are not actively pursuing something that fulfills their why, even in a small way. Yeah, I agree. And I can for- say, I, I, and I agree when I'm saying that for myself, Right, how I felt when I was in those moments was I knew that I wasn't like expending any of those parts of myself that wanted to. I think I know what Sierra's why is. Yeah, she won't tell me. And I don't know if I, I thought my why was helping people because that's well, what yours it, is. It, it, Maybe And it way. could be, it could sure. be. But I think. My bigger why. I think your why is serving people. Oh, I love to serve. 
And like at first it was very literal. No, it was because you were <laughs> you were a server. Yes, okay. But now and even when you wanted to become so a, a mental health professional. Yes. You wanted to serve people. Want you wanted to be your tool. You wanted to make your life better. To educate I told yourself. You I wanted to be a fixer and you're like, that's not it exactly, but close. Well, yeah. And even now on the podcast, because we we both do this, but our roles are different. Yes. And what you do is you educate yourself. You do this work yeah. to make it accessible to other people. Aww. So you use yourself. Yeah, I'm a tool. As a, oh, I fucking love being a tool. <laughs> Here's a tool. I've never wanted to be a tool. <laughs> You're, you perform acts of service now. Oh my God, call me Mrs. Hama. <laughs> All the time. Is it weird that I'm with somebody whose literal love language is acts of service? <laughs> I am his act of service. But the, as soon as we were talking about this the other day, I'm like, oh my God, I really think that you're why is serving people yeah. it is making sure that they have things that they need making sure that like they're taken care of mm -hmm. because you think about certain things that like are not at the top of my list yeah. like is not in my oh my god do i yeah like what <laughs> like making sure that we have water and oh, I have, I'm, 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 I need to get back on that because we, I am <laughs> or so paper thirsty. towels. Yes. And you're always yeah, yeah. talking about all the things at your house. Like, okay, we need to prep this and we need to get this ready. And it, it may not be, um, like you being the person who uh, physically does them. Yes. Yeah. But it is at the top prep. of your mind. Yeah. <laughs> and same with Corey, like making sure that his scrubs were clean before he went oh to work God, when yes. he was it's so yeah. or staying up with the baby so that he didn't have to and he could get sleep yeah. there's there was an element of just wanting to provide a resource for someone yeah, so without them having to ask for it shoot themselves forward yeah <laughs> yes i want to be a literal <laughs> slingshot <laughs> yes yeah yeah and help you get to your goals because you're still helping people i am and you're still helping people work on themselves yes I can't it's, do it for you. Right. And I will provide a, I'll be a tool. Yes. <laughs> <Really like that. laughs> what kind of a tool do you do think you, you think agree? I, I totally agree. And it's funny because we kind of said that Corey was similar to that, but in different ways, which me and Corey have been like that for each other. Mm -hmm. We've been very uh, back and forth slingshots for each other. Shane and I have always said that we slingshot one yeah, another. Where we're like, okay, you're the one that's getting like mm -hmm. with Corey when he was full time working. That's why I did everything with the baby, because I was like, hey, man, you are providing everything financially for our family. Right. I will do whatever I can to make sure that when you are not here, I got it. And when you are here, you can focus a little bit more on what you have to do when you're at your job. Cause that's right. What, and so now that I'm the one mm -hmm. financially providing, he's like, yeah. let me try, let me try to do that. He's not as good as me. <laughs> well, and I'm getting there. I told Sierra that I thought Corey's uh, why was being a support oh he's system. such a cheerleader and i love it and, and <laughs> he, he is. really is he really is and i for everybody and i think when you are uh we're i don't want to say working but like if you are actively pursuing your why yeah. in some way or you are fulfilling your why because i think your why is like kind of like a cup you fill it's yeah. what gives you energy instead of draining you of it totally like you said it's what propels you forward yeah when you're not doing that i think that's when you can everything feels so short term it feels just like dead end mm -hmm. and you don't know what the next move is and then it almost feels like if you don't have a finish line why are you even running right what's the race about if right you don't know where it's ending or why right so the whole reason we wanted to talk about this in the first place is just because I think people get so caught up in what do I want to do? What do I want to be? What is my title? What is my level of education? What achievement, 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 and not why? Well, yes, but why? And also that it has to be a fixed thing. We were talking about that with other people in our lives, which I won't name names because it's not my story to tell for them, but mm. like. There are people in my life who have done the same thing for as long as I've been alive mm. and then have suddenly decided this isn't for me and now I'm going to serve a, another purpose. And maybe it's not um, maybe it's not as like rewarding financially, but it's more rewarding internally 
on their soul and their and for their why for fulfilling their purpose. And I I think that that is such a important message that I want to spread because I want people to know that like I I truly believe that the universe or whoever whatever power is at play helped us out because oh. they saw us actively trying to do good in yes. the world trying to use whatever's inside of us to make the world a better right. place and i do want to say that pursuing your why or especially when it comes to like work is a privilege oh, totally. because not everyone gets to just be like oh you know what i'll take a pay cut in order to do this because it fills my cup so, there's a reason why i couldn't for as long as i did and yes. literally covid was the only reason i could and that mm-hmm. was because the world was shut down right and i'm like oh great well i guess i could do this now Right. Not that I'm saying COVID was a privilege, but you know what I mean? It, it did open doors well, that you, I didn't never yeah, think it's were a allowed silver, to be open. It's a silver linings thing, yeah. I guess. But I think that if you do have the opportunity in some way, shape, or form, like even if it's not the thing that's filling your bank account, if it can be like a side thing that you do as like a hobby to just fill your cup, that it's it's worth it to try and figure out what it is. Yeah. Because like you were mentioning, how maybe this person was taking a a pay cut in Mm -hmm. order to pursue something that was more internally fulfilling. Sure, maybe the other job was filling their bank account more, Mm -hmm. but how much was it draining their internal battery? Yeah, and let's talk about like years on your life that it could have been cutting short because of the stress and the, the damage that it's doing internally to you. So is it worth it having all the money if you can't live as long Uh to spend it, you know? Well- And that, too, makes me think about relationships. Yeah. Because you almost have to ask yourself, like, why am I in this relationship? Yeah. Or friendship or whatever. Like, why am I a a part of an organization? Yeah. Does this really, like, if I really want to think about it and my why is helping people, my why would not allow me to be a part of the church anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. Because was I really helping people Mm -hmm. or was I contributing to an organization that was actively working against certain people, the rights of people? Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to take a step back and reflect and be like, oh, my God, is this really helping? Yeah. Or is this harmful Harmful to someone or to myself, which then makes it difficult for me to act out? you know, the way that I want to show up in the world. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, how do you find your why? I don't fucking know. I wish we did. I I didn't know mine until we were just sitting on the sky. (laughs) Do you think that's yours though? I do. I really do. I mean, I would also say like, well, I would have said helping people, but I believe serving is a way to help people. Yes. Oh, 100%. Definitely just a more specific term. Right. But everything that I've done in my life has been in some way to like, make someone's life easier or more fulfilling i enjoy seeing other people living their best life like i love that when i see other people and they're like i don't understand when people see other people like advancing and they get upset about that Mm -hmm. i don't get that because i've always been like that was the goal right Mm where we should all be happy about that that's what we wanted for that person so then when people are like well she could have done blah 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 why are we doing that? Yeah. What are you doing? And again, success looks different to everybody. So like maybe they're like, oh, well, she shouldn't have done that because she lost money. You don't know if that was how she measured success or he right. measured anybody measured success. To me, if they would have seen me doing this over, I don't know, going to school. How many people do we know that told me that like, mm, quite? are you sure you don't want like maybe you should go back to school because are you sure you don't want to go back because you're doing the podcast? And I'm like, hey, eventually maybe if I went to school and did a whole bunch of, uh, let's be honest, bullshit classes to Mm -hmm. get to where it actually needed to be five years down the line, then I could help people. But I'm going to still be there. Yeah. And I'm doing something now that is actively really helping and fulfilling people's lives. So Mm -hmm. maybe because it's not something that comes with the degree, you don't find it successful, but we don't measure success the same way if that's the case. But I think that's so important for people to ask themselves, like, Mm -hmm. how do I measure success? Mm -hmm. And And why? And do I really give a shit if the way that I measure measure success doesn't match 
the way someone else does. Yeah. And I think that Shane had a difficult time when he left work because for a while, success to him meant financially su- being the breadwinner, yep. being like the man of the house and having this title and doing all of these things, mm-hmm. which I understood. I yeah. understood that when I left teaching and people were like, you're a photographer, mm-hmm. it fucking killed me. It yeah. hurt to hear that and be like, oh my God, no, but you don't understand. Like, yeah, why? And I think if I really want to break it down in the way that you kind of did with like serving people is helping, I think that Mine is more, I want to help people see themselves the way they are. Totally. With, without all of the influence from everything else. Totally. And I can do that in so many different ways. With my students, I, I remember that my um, supervisor, she, w- she had done an evaluation with me. And so we were talking about it in her office. And she was like, how did you know that they were going to be able to do do the things that you ask them to do. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I just didn't assume that they couldn't. Yes. And how many people, because I taught students with disabilities, how many people look at them and already assume that, that they're they can't. Yeah, incapable of doing certain things. Yeah. Why would I do that? Why would I put them in a box? And if they couldn't do it, why would I assume that they're incapable of it? Why yeah. would I assume that they don't know how to learn how to do it? Right. Because I didn't know how to run a buffer when I first started teaching <laughs> custodial <laughs> resources. Like, right. I didn't know how to do that. But totally. that didn't mean I was incapable. And yes. the same thing with them. Why would I assume that they're incapable of doing something? Do we all have limitations for certain things? Yeah, definitely. But that doesn't mean that we can't try to find a way to make stuff work for us. Well, and different people learn different ways. So there right. was a lot of people who thought when I was in school that I couldn't, like, that I wasn't, that we've talked about this with my mindset, fixed mm-hmm. and growth mindset, that I had a fixed mindset because I was neurodivergent, didn't know this at the time, but mm-hmm. I couldn't learn certain ways that other people learned. If you, you love to watch a YouTube video, you get it from yep. that. I have to read an article and we can absorb the same things but if you read an article as opposed to me watching a video, we will learn it. Let me tell you what. Differently. This, this activity is in words. And yes. I'm like, I can't look Having at this. A hard time. I don't know what we're about to look at because I refuse. My brain sees words and goes, not for me. Nope, I can't. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that either one of us is right. bad at learning. It's just we learn different ways. So right. like, why would you assume like uh, they can't do it? Can't? I hate that word. Right. I hate can't. And I had this conversation with my, because Sierra and I talked about this and then I went and had lunch with my dad and that was something that he and I talked about. I was like, what's your why? And he goes, I don't think I was ever allowed to have a why. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I, yeah, right. What do you mean? What do you mean you're not allowed to have a why? But I do understand that generationally things that were important to different generations influenced how they conveyed importance to their children. Yeah. So like the boomers were like, Oh my God, the hey, Great Depression. depression. <laughs> Money, Money is, is very important. Security is very important. So, stability, yeah. Our. The Gen Xers were like, oh, fuck. Okay. So, money, stability, which then they taught us having a stable source of income is, is the, the most, most important, important thing. And, and so, for some reason, that translated into college for, for I don't well, know. Well, yes, why because it that... was guaranteed, quote unquote, quote unquote. to be a, a, a higher pay. Yeah. And a title. Yeah. And so. Success. But we saw our parents hate their jobs. Oh, my God. Literally stay in jobs that they would come home and be like, why am I doing this? Right. I hate it. So we learned. I don't want to live like that. Hey, that I don't get a lot like of time sucks. on this earth. And that's definitely not how I want to do so it. So I think that's what our generation is focusing on is more so like what is going to fulfill me and, and bring me joy and not fucking drain me of every bit of life that I have. So that I can in the finally name of be happy after I'm 65. Money. Pass. Well, even later, because nowadays they keep retirement just keeps going back and back and back. And I think we're finally like, hey. No. Yeah. Hey, I'm not going to absolutely hate my life until I'm in my 80s. Yeah. So no. Well, when I started, my dad and I just kept talking about it. And based on my observation of him, my dad has always been someone who he wants you to feel like you are the first person and the only person to ever 
experience like a connection with him. Yeah. He, when he was a coach, he would tell the same stories in the locker room over and over again, but every team he ever had felt like they were the first person to ever hear it. Right. And every single, every fucking player would run through a wall for my dad because they were like, this man yeah. got me hyped the fuck up at the park. Yes. When he was uh, working at the park for 20 some years, if someone came in with an issue, he wanted them to know, like, this is something that I'm going to rectify. I'm going to make this right for you. Right. It wasn't like, oh, my God, here comes another person complaining. Who gives a fuck? It's a children's park. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> yeah. It was I need them you to matter. leave here feeling like we care. Yeah. And that, again, is how I felt when he was coaching. And now even at the cemetery. You're not the first person to lose a family member. No. You're not the first person who's trying to plan for, but. No, but he can't. When my uncle died and we were all, j uncle on my other side of the family, yeah. by the way. So we were all there and I was like losing my shit at the um, funeral, crying my eyes out. Yeah. So I literally was going through a miscarriage at the same time. So mm -hmm. it was extra emotional. And I looked up and your dad was there and I was like, oh. He didn't have to be there again. That's not his side of the family, right. but it was so sweet that he came and I was like, oh my God. I mean, I know that's where he works, but like, I know he doesn't go well, to all of those. So it was very how about, nice. That how about this? One of his first days on the job, a couple comes in, they trigger warning for infant loss, mm. stillborn twins. Mm. They don't have money <gasps> to pay for a burial and the, God. the, woman the mom is just staring off into space completely zoned out 100 oh, percent. and they're like we don't know what we're gonna do to lay our babies to oh. rest and my dad goes don't worry we have something in place to take care of this he tells he tells my mom this and he says and she goes what do you guys have in place and he goes i bought them oh my god <laughs> And she goes, you can't keep doing that. We're going to go broke. Yeah, <laughs> you like, can't buy everyone's plot. But who can't afford it? But like, yeah. But that's... to to my dad, something that I have seen forever is like, you are special. You are important. You matter. And those are, yeah, those are huge moments where you need, you need someone on your side. Right. And that's awesome that you did that. It's, oh, wow. it's insane to me. Like when I think about it and, and he really thought he wasn't. He didn't have a why, but I'm like, but you did. Yeah. And even if you didn't go into any of your jobs with the intent of pursuing your why, you found a way to live it out. And, and even those, it, it might seem small on the day, like moves, mm -hmm. those had an impact on those people's lives that then I think will create a ripple effect of yes. positive impacts. I mean, truly, yep. people will remember those and want to carry that on yes. or, or um, emanate it in some way, uh -huh. some way. So, Emanate or emulate? Emulate it. Is it emanate? Is it emulate? <laughs> See, an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Ruminate? <laughs> I think it's emulate. Um, I was going to say something else as well. Oh. One of the things my dad's always said is it's not about where you're at. It's about <laughs> where you're going and what you're going to do to get there. emulate. <laughs> what was it? Emanate. <laughs> Probably a word I made up like most, <laughs> most other words. Hey, my why is making shit up and making you all believe it. <laughs> emanate. Issue or spread out from a source. Oh, yeah. Emanate is like coming out from. Oh, but, yeah, but that could kind of be the same thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll Fuck go it. with it. We'll allow it. Um, but yeah, my dad always says, and this was something that he used to tell all of his players. And like, I can remember several different players on his team would talk about this at their college graduation. They would be like, my coach in high school would say, it's not about where you're at. It's about where you're going and what you're going to do to get there. Again, I don't think my dad made that up. So don't Google it and be like, actually, that was um, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> sure fine, was. Fine. Okay, that's fine. I'm just saying he's the one who told me and other people. But <laughs> That is something that has always like stuck with me and it's stuck with so many people. Right. And if I, if I think about what's my why, it's like I can, that is an attainable way to go about figuring out what it is and finding a way to achieve it. Cause yes. I even said to Shane, I'm like, your why doesn't have to be something consistent all the time. Something grandiose. Yeah. It can be as simple as I want my kids to think their dad was cool. Well, and that's how we talked about measuring success. Like, yes. Measuring success doesn't have to be like 
such a huge thing. You could say, I measure success by helping people. And maybe that person that you helped today. Oh, I was thinking about this the other day because my therapist said something to me. And she. You have a therapist? Back when I was going to. Okay. Therapy. No, I know, I know. <laughs> I was this like, was well, when this is I was huge going, news. <laughs> this was when I was in my abusive relationship. I remember her saying, pause. I'm sorry, don't forget it. Hey. No one tells Sierra that she needs to go back to therapy. Yeah, listen, she knows. I know, and it's not everybody's like you did this, this, and this. You have the money. You yeah. get your nails done. You got your hair done. I know. That's not the reason. Maybe let's remember that therapy. Sometimes you have to get worse before you get better. Yeah. And I'm at a spot in my life where I can't afford to get worse right now. So yeah. like I'm okay. Thank you. I appreciate you. She has but a also, goal. Yeah, but we can't we'll get there eventually. We support one another on our journeys yeah. and not everyone's journey it's it takes the same. the same path. Yeah. OK, yeah. so let's just give Sierra snaps. And Thank until you. then. Thank you. We wait. OK, <laughs> we support her until she's ready. OK, exactly. Um, but when I was going yes. because I truly needed it because I was like in the middle of trying to get out of this abusive relationship, I remember her saying like, or me crying about the situation and blah, 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 whatever, saying it. And she said, I said, I know I have to do this. And she said, you have someone counting on you. And I go, I know I have to do it for Noah. And she's like, that's not who I was talking about. She's like, I, you, you have to do it for you. Yeah. You're the only person that is going to help you right now. Yes. We've talked about this. How, how many times about, you know, nobody is on your team the way you're on your team. Mm-hmm. So you have you, to do it. Because you're going to spend 100% of your life with you. You're yes. the only person who will. And it was like such a wake up moment because I, I, I am a server and a helper. And I was thinking like, I got to do it for Noah. And she was like, you owe you what you want to give to Noah. Mm -hmm. so, so give that energy to yourself. But you know what you actually reminded me of? Um, there was a time where I was incredibly jealous of Sierra because she was able to go and <laughs> get massages oh, yeah. or get her yeah. nails done or get yeah. her eyelashes done. And I was like, I want to be able to do that. But what Sierra was doing that I wasn't was she was finding ways to prioritize herself. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't mad that she could. I was mad that I couldn't, couldn't figure out a way how. Yeah. And not because of any other reason other than I was not wanting to help myself. Right. You, you were finally you being were able to enough to do that. that exactly. Those things were important enough to set aside time for. So when you were talking about like, you got to show up for you. Yes. That's how you show you were showing up for I you. I did, especially because that was right after COVID restrictions lifted. And I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, I don't see people anymore. Yes. And so much of my life was revolved around being around other people. And a newborn. So those. Well, yeah. Well, the new. But you know what? Before her, I was a social person mm -hmm. who, who kind of thrived off of that a little bit. So like when I would get my nails done or my hair done or get a massage, I kind of just needed to be around another person. And like, yes, those services like helped me feel good about myself. But it also was like a way that I could connect with another person. <laughs> I had to well, force him to talk to me for an hour. And if we want to break it down even more, as much as COVID allowed you an opportunity to pursue this, mm -hmm. it took away something yeah. that was fulfilling to you in a way that, yeah, it was probably exhausting and was not like always super conducive to yeah. the life you wanted to live. But I enjoy interacting took, with other people. Yes, it did take away a part of you. Yeah. And then when you started being able to go to these appointments, you didn't go to like big name places. Oh, you no, went. I went to people that I was friends with. That and I, small businesses. Yes, that you I were knew. supporting them. Yes. By allowing them to provide you a service that supported Yeah, there was actually you. multiple times where I was like, I definitely can't afford this. But I also know that they are relying on me and my money that I give them every week. So, like, I can't take it away from <laughs> them. So, like, there was definitely times where I was like, uh, I should probably quit doing this. But also, I know that she, I'm filling her spot. And then yep. she would have to find another person to fill that. And I don't want to make her do that. So. <laughs> because you and also I have a really good relationship with the people. I, I'm right. a very loyal person when it comes to that. So, I've been going to the same person that does my nails for, like, since right. I've started getting them done. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. I do know. Um, do we want to see what this exercise yeah, is? Because it's, it. a, it's called a friend's exercise. A quick and fun friends. way <laughs> to find your why. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So the friend's exercise, a quick and fun way to find your why. I am going to be reading this verbatim, but as a reminder, this is from simonthenack.com. It's a free exercise, so we're not stealing. 
It's important. Yeah. Your why is a statement of who you are that sums up what inspires you cool. and the value you offer the world. I don't like how that's worded. Is that how we've sounded this whole time? <laughs> your value is not in your why. Your value no, is just that you exist. That, you, that you're, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Okay. You know mm, what I mean? Don't love that. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Fine. Okay. I mean, that seems like what work people would say, oh, which probably. is like kind of gaslighting. Probably. Properly. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> it's, I always feel like work's always like, you matter, but only if you do what I need you to do to <laughs> yeah. make me money. What are you going to contribute to this big, big bank account? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it comes from your life experiences. So you have only one why that never changes because right, you are who you are no matter what you do or where you go. Okay. You can use your why in nearly every aspect of your life from finding a job to navigating your personal life. The process of uncovering your why can take a few hours or longer. Oh, fuck, Simon. We don't have time for that. Simon, give us the quick So we've version. developed this exercise as a quick and simple way to get you in the ballpark. a boy, Simon. Plus, it's really fun to do. I'm a dentist. <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Why are your friends your friends? It seems like a simple question, but it's harder than you think. Clearly, we're not friends with everyone. So why do you love your friends? And why do your friends love you? Knowing your why answers the, that last question. <laughs> or why our... My God, I can't fucking read. This is why Sierra does this. Our why reveals our value in the lives of our friends. Our value in the lives... I don't like the word value. Yeah. Get that out of here. Simon, yes, snack. <laughs> so the logic follows that by finding out the reason our friends love us, we can find our why. Great. So all we need to do is ask our friends the reason they love us. This is a little easier said than done. Our limbic brain, the part of our brain that controls our emotions, like love, has no capacity for language. That's interesting. Our neocortex, the part of the brain that controls language, doesn't process emotion. What the fuck? <laughs> that means we can't simply ask our friends the question, why are we friends? And get straight to the reason. Oh, my God. Because I like you, bitch. <laughs> get a straight answer that reveals our why. Hey, guys, the why do you like us? Tell us in the comments below. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell us our why. <laughs> the good news is a bunch of years ago, Simon figured out a way to get the answer that works. Did Simon not write this? Simon. Simon, Simon. says, <laughs> step one, <laughs> who is your ride or die? Is that what Simon says? Mm -hmm. Who's, who is my ride or die? Think of friends you love and who love you. These are people that you trust unconditionally. They know they can call you at 3 a.m. and you'd be there for them. And that you could call at 3 a.m. in absolute confidence they will be there for you. Even if you only talk occasionally, you know you'll always have each other's back. You, Chris, and Lindsay. Done. Okay. You, there, Mackenzie. Mm -hmm. Do I have any other friends? Did I say you? Yeah. Oh my god! Imagine I didn't. I can't. I couldn't remember. And then obviously Corey. And I think honestly at this point anybody in Corey's family. I would say Shane and Randy. Yeah. Swallow that. I don't know saying. if you can. You count your family. But we let's do. yeah. But we're also coworkers. Scratch that. Mm. What is this okay. supposed to be telling me, Simon? <laughs> Simon, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Ask those people. Why are we friends? Why are we friends? At first, they may not understand the question. I don't know. I'm confused. They might say, some may ask, what do you mean? It's not that they don't know or understand. It's because the part of their brain responsible for those Kristen feelings, right now. <laughs> trust, love, loyalty, doesn't have access to language. Of course they know. It's just biologically difficult to put feelings into words. <laughs> okay, I'm calling there. Wait. Okay. And now we wait. Two friends don't work. No. Great. None of my friends are going to answer. Well, Kristen didn't even read much. <laughs> but I also told her, don't feel pressure. Because you I'm at answer. work. Everything okay? Just text him back. No context. Why are we friends? <laughs> it's important. I need to know right now. I said I was going to ask why we're friends. An online form told me to ask to help find my why. <laughs> He's going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> 
Although his response was, yo, I'm at work. Everything okay? That's cute. That's your why. Because he's a good fucking dude. He is a good dude. All right, let me see. When I'm naked with him in a pool. <laughs> That's my why. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to keep that in? Yeah, I don't okay. care. Let's see. Someone better give me a fucking why. That. Mackenzie. Oh my god. I have no friends. Mackenzie, I swear to god, if you're in a forest right now chasing mushrooms, I'm gonna be furious. Hey, it's Mackenzie. Leave me a short. <laughs> God damn it, Mackenzie! At the top. <laughs> Did you hear her voicemail? Leave me a short message so I can reach it. <laughs> reach it. She's very short. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, basically, basically, fucking. <laughs> is there more? <laughs> I guess that's it. I called there's the other. No two. more questions. No, there's oh, more. Okay. I just met. There's no more people for me no, to call. Me neither. I have one friend. She's gonna be at my wedding. Okay, so um, basically, I guess we have to... So apparently... <laughs> apparently, we have to ask each other. Why are we friends? Why? Because our dads are related? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're good people. Oh, we're good people? That's why we're friends? I want... Good people like good people. No, I... what the fuck do you want? <laughs> I told you at lunch even today mm. that I enjoy surrounding myself with people who I truly believe at their core are just good fucking people because Aww. it inspires me to keep being a good person because sometimes the world fucking sucks mm. and it's really easy to be like, you turn your back on the world. <laughs> the world turns your back on you. What is that? Lion King? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> you turn your back on the world and the world turns <laughs> back on you. Yeah. I feel like it's easy for me to do that because I'm angsty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's depressed. funny is i also quoted lion king yesterday but it was you could be a big pig too Oi! <laughs> and that's how i feel <laughs> um no, but like i like I, I enjoy being around people who i know just want to fucking make a difference in a good way in the world you know you know okay so mine feels selfish <laughs> okay because <laughs> i'm thinking about it I like to surround myself with people that I don't have to question who I am. Like, I don't have yeah. to mask. Yeah. I also like that I don't have to question who they are. Yes. I like really authentic people. Like I've said a million times. They sent me times, a very nice message. Aw. I can't wait for you to read it out loud. But like I've said a million <laughs> times, the reason why I, you and Corey are so the same person. And I never have to question myself. Now. Can both of you come off a certain way to some people? <laughs> yes. There have been certain people who maybe don't know how to take either <laughs> one of you. When they're like, I don't know, are they being a dick? And I'm like, they are just really, really up for you. There's no guessing game. No. With either with either of you. No. <laughs> and I fucking need that. But sometimes I, I don't ever. I used to be the person who was constantly questioning like, but are you? But what you does that mean? Me? What does what that you, mean? Yeah. Are you sure? Will you tell me? And with you and Corey, you're both like, hey. I will fucking tell you. If the <laughs> shit is, uh, there's no, why wouldn't I? You right, know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. I like Megan. That. Yeah, I was going to say Megan, but Fuck. I didn't want to, I didn't want to say that. And then you'd be like, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. But it'd be no, hard because... to be here for you because that question was kind of worded weird. Like you, at 3 a.m. they would be there for you. Well, no, like, I, well, she I, can't I've, physically. She's I feel like I could away. probably call her and she would, totally. or she'd at least check on me in the morning. No, the reason I, uh, you triggered that is because that's something that Megan said to me was like, you don't have to worry. Yeah. I will be honest with you. I will tell you if I have an issue. I love that. You don't have to tiptoe around my feelings. And I think that was why I was so attracted to my group of friends in college, which the three of the people that I listed all came from that Mackenzie yeah. there, Shane. I met them all the same year, the same place, same way. Yeah. And they all made me feel like, I didn't have to mask. I didn't have to play a role. I just got to be myself. And I got to, I got to experience getting to know myself and learning, getting to decide whether or not I liked that person. Yeah. And it turns out I did. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that not only did I like that person, but other people like that person. Right. And I that's think. It's a cool thing to figure out. It is a cool thing because even now talking about it, I'm like, well, that's, I already said that that was my why is yes. getting people to see themselves 
And that was what you got to do. Yeah, beyond the fog. that's why you like them, because they got to let you do what you like to make people do. (gasps) Some is the neck. Oh, my God. It's like a mirror. Like a mirror. (laughs) Whoa. Okay, Thayer said, you're genuine and true, fun and funny, encouraging and loyal. Through real highs and lows, we faced our lives together. What more could I ask for uh, of a person before calling them friend? Naked in a pool. (laughs) That's what I said. (laughs) It's all you're missing. <laughs> Just kidding. We I always go to college together. I was I pregnant. Always <laughs> said that. Um, well, Thayer and I always agreed that, like, if anything ever happened, that he would move in and help me raise my children. Yeah. <laughs> he has got to. <laughs> yeah, I was like, someone's gonna help, have to help me yeah. raise these babies. <laughs> like, gonna take them in. And and by anything ever happened, I mean like, God forbid, there's like an accident of some sort. Right. But. Anyway, okay, moving on. <laughs> I'm not trying to off my husband. <laughs> this isn't going to be used in a fucking criminal case later. <laughs> yeah, no. No, no, no. Uh, step three, listen. They will keep saying things like, I don't know, this is a really hard question. Actually, they won't answer at all. Yeah. Simon. So how do I listen to silence? Simon? Just let them keep struggling. <laughs> well, Simon, Simon that talk. seems cruel. <laughs> to find the right words. Simon, I don't like to pressure my friends like that. <laughs> It may feel like they're going in circles, but just keep listening. Eventually, they'll make a shift and start saying things like, I feel, you make me feel, when I'm around you, I feel. The way you make me feel. Really turn me down. <laughs> you will likely feel an emotional connection with this person when they describe themselves and they, the way they feel when they are with you. I feel like you're coming on to me, Simon. Yeah, this feels hot. I'm going to end it. Um, honestly... We don't need the rest of this. I think we've already figured it out. Yeah, for here's my why. Ta da! <laughs> serving you. It, hey, hey, if serving you, fucking, but like, <laughs> what if it was like serving? serving. Bitch, I'm here to serve. <laughs> I'm here to slay the day. Yeah. Serving you, Cantina <laughs> Aguilera. <laughs> um, well, that's all we have guys no if i hope you enjoyed it do you think that this was helpful or do you think that we just like toxic positivity like ranted this no 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 i i say no 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 no. immediately don't do that because here's what i believe and because uh one of the things we're going to table and maybe talk about is the law of attraction oh and i in researching i'm very much questioning like am i toxic positivity too much but i think there is like we've talked about the pendulum yes. swings and not all positivity is toxic positivity you need positivity in your life you need a why you need a goal okay because what uh, what other momentum is gonna uh, to be real the world fucking sucks <laughs> so like what other momentum you're is here there what's gonna you make to you going enjoy it and yeah and you know try to do what i hope is just spread good in the world yeah leave it better than you found it that's exactly it so i don't think i don't think we did that i think okay if you think we did try to ask yourself why you believe that all positivity is toxic we're not trying to gaslight you but no why no but why uh, but also tell me why ain't nothing but <laughs> <hard> tell <laughs> uh no truly if this was helpful for you in some kind of a way do you have a friend no, my dog just got done getting groomed. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Tell me I can and, go pick him up. Anyways, um, if if this was helpful for you and, and at any point in time, maybe you like sat and did some journaling, reflecting, uh, I don't know, or something popped into your head, uh, tell us. Share it with us. Yeah, let us know. Somewhere. Okay. Tell um, us why you're, where your friends. <laughs> and don't forget, if you want to join us live in Pittsburgh or Buffalo, then... <laughs> Um, we have links in our bio on Instagram, yes. our link trees. If you go to our Ladies and Tangents Facebook page, you'll find the post that has links there. Yes. Oh, I'm also going to try and... We um, need to say this as well. Oh. Because the entire premise of the show is sharing your scandals. So yes. if you do plan on going, or if you're from around those areas, or if you just really want your stories shared at a live show... Please send your stories with either the title in it in the email, Pittsburgh show or Buffalo show, whatever. Live um, show. Live show, anything. 
put that in and send that to lntstories at gmail.com. And that uh, little whatever email is in my Instagram bio as well if you forget what it's called. So just go to my Instagram and you can see it yeah. in my bio. Um, we'll probably also post it on our story when mm-hmm. we get closer to the dates. But we want to be able to read those for you and, and you know, react to our scandals live and in person. Yeah. I'm Bringing also going to handles to you. I'm also going to try and put it in uh on our website so that it's easily accessible there yes. as well. Yeah. So, anything else? No, I think that's it. Okay. All right. Uh thanks for hanging out everyone. We love you so much. We'll see you next week. All right. We're out. Goodbye.